tuning in. As you can see, I've got a couple of small pizzas here. Uh, they're both thin crust. Um, this is only the second time I've ever been to this pizza place. The first time was when I made the skydiving pizza video. And I went there and I ordered a small pizza and I meant to tell them I wanted a thin crust because they have thin, medium, and, and thick. And they gave me a, a thick crust because they didn't ask me and I didn't think to ask them. So anyway, I made sure I got the thin crust. So I've got the Alibaba special and the all dressed. So the Alibaba special has mushrooms and sausage and cheese and peppers and, and olives. The all dressed has pretty much the same thing, but also has ham. And uh, I see some uh, broccoli on there and some pineapple and stuff like that. So I'm going to give this a whirl. to eat her today because I'm starving. So that's the Alibaba. That's the old rest. You know, Linda and I, we buy frozen pizza quite a bit. We always get the thin crust. Get them at Costco. a membership card so you know we buy dog food and lots of stuff and they got great deals I mean you know sometimes you go to a regular store and you buy a small container of basal margarine and Costco will sell you two big jumbo containers for the same price so they have some good deals so the other day we were there Dad lent us his truck and camper. He hadn't used it in years. And so we took it home, cleaned it up. I got a new battery for it. The engine had been replaced a few years earlier. It had less than 20,000 miles on it. So I changed the oil. Because it had been sitting for a while.
so we're going to use her dad's truck and camper to drive across Canada. Now, the thing about driving across Canada when you get to Nova Scotia to get to Newfoundland, you have to take a ferry and you have to reserve ahead of time. I think you have to. Um, so I had no idea how long it takes to get there. So I tried to Google it to see, you know, if anybody else had any similar experiences. So I just came to the conclusion that I'll give myself about two and a half weeks. And if I'm sort of uh, falling behind, I'll have to put the pedal to the metal. But if I'm, you know, ahead of schedule, then I'll just sort of zigzag and, and you know, you know, take it from there. It's better to be early than late. So we had about two and a half weeks to get there. So we decided to leave around the end of June. We left on a Wednesday. About three people asked me if I had a GPS. And I said, no, I don't need one. I don't know if you've ever heard of the famous last words category, but that would have been a good candidate for the famous last words category. Instead, I went down to the Automo Automotive Association and got about 30 maps. Old school. A map for each province and a map for the major cities. to stay in campgrounds, Walmart parking lots, and truck stops. At this point, we'd stayed in campgrounds up to this point. So we continue on. Now we got to Calgary instead of, we could have just driven around Calgary quite easily, but we decided to go through Calgary and have a look. Wow, that was a, a mistake. had a GPS. Anyways, after asking directions, we found our way back out. Continued on to Drumheller. Drumheller is a fascinating little town. All dinosaurs. They've been digging up bones there for years. If you're 
different drum gallery. You gotta check out the Royal Trail Museum. World renowned, fabulous. So after hanging out there for a couple of days, there's lots of interesting rock formations and you know stuff like that. Now the uh, thing about Drum Elder, it's kind of like the foothills of the Rockies. And then once you get beyond that, then it really flattens out. So now we're getting into Saskatchewan, where I was born. And Linda had never been outside of British Columbia, except to, you know, Mexico, Hawaii, Cuba, and all the countries her and I had been to, but that was the only province she's ever seen. And she's been a lot of places, but she'd never seen any other provinces. So she was fascinated with the, the flatlands, you know, that, that ribbon highway that goes for 50 miles, patchwork of farmland, you know, crops like you know, canola, wheat, alfalfa. Just amazing. We were taking pictures along the way. She had never actually seen a grain elevator before. I grew up with stuff like that, but now they're few and far between. So we stopped and took pictures of, of grain elevators. It used to be, excuse me, it used to be every town had one or more. Saskatoon, my hometown. Joni Mitchell's hometown as well. People ask me if I ever met her. Never did. So we spent our first night in a Walmart park a lot. Now Walmart's really smart. They let you stay in their park a lot. You're not taking up any room because it's after hours, there's nobody there. They're not putting out any amenities, like, you know, they're not giving you any water or sewage or electricity. And yet, guaranteed, the next morning or even that same day, you will go in there and buy groceries or something. And we did that every time. One time before breakfast, Linda went into Walmart and she bought $55 for the groceries. Breakfast. We did that all the time. So anyway, the next morning in Saskatoon, Linda took me for Father's Day breakfast. It was the first time we'd eaten in a restaurant since we left Vancouver Island. It was on a Sunday. Then we go to the house that I spent 12 years in. My parents bought it in 62 and sold it in 74 when we moved out here to the west coast. Now I'd been back to Saskatoon a couple times over the years, but every time I knocked on the door, there's nobody home at that house. Finally, I knocked on the door and the people that bought the house saw my parents were still living there and they let me in to have a look. in that house in 41 years. Structurally it hadn't changed, but they completely renovated the kitchen. The fridge was moved over here. The counters were all redone. Cabinets, still everything was completely redone. Um, they, I mean, they upgraded everything at some point, but it was still the same house, still looked the same. So we go downstairs. Are actually dug old basements underground. Go downstairs, and the first thing I see is this old bar that my dad had built out of beer bottles, the old stubby beer bottles. And he used some of those Heidelberg beer bottles, the weird shaped ones, and he built a bar. You know, he glued all these bottles together, like laid them down and glued them one on top of each other. I don't know where he got the idea from. I'm not even sure what kind of glue he used, but then he put pieces of flat glass on top and he used it as a bar. And he put some Christmas lights in there, so it was kind of psychedelic, you know. And, you know, it was the dawning of the 
age of Aquarius, I guess, right? So he was very proud of it. But I was amazed that they still had that. They weren't using it, but I think they wanted to keep it. They didn't want to get rid of it. And you know what, my friends? I was in such a started driving that direction, down south. We stopped at a lake called Buffalo Pound Lake. We used to fish there all the time and camp there. It's a lake where the, the road is built right across it. They did that twice, the old one. Kind of a roadway, so they built a new one back in the 60s. Still, and that's the new one. So we stopped there for lunch. You know, it's nice having a truck and camper, because if you want to have lunch, you just pull over and make lunch. If you want to go to the bathroom, you pull over bathroom. It's like, it's kind of like being a turtle. You got your, your house on your back the whole time. It's kind of cool. So, we continue on. And we, we're driving by this old abandoned farm. A lot of farmers buy these places up and they just use them to store their Zevon wrote a song. I forget the name of it, but it's kind of poking fun of Canadians. It's, it's, it's kind of funny. I like Warren Zevon. And he mentions Big Beaver. And he's going on about hockey and all that. And uh, it, it's all in jest. I mean, you know, we Canadians, we love our, our neighbors to the south. So we, we know it's all fun. But anyway, so uh, <laughs> it's a funny song, but I just can't think of the name of it. But my uh, siblings went to school in Big Beaver. Rockland to Buffalo Gap when I was about two weeks old. And when we moved there, 
was already uh, dying down. It had been wiped out by a tornado in the 30s. So there was only about 8 or 10 families still living there. So anyways, Linda and I, we uh, drove through uh, Glen. Drove around there, you know, by, uh, you know, where I was born, you know. And then we continued on to. so she knew I was. I mean, I, kn I knew Jimmy and his parents and his sisters and everybody else and his little brother. So I asked if we can park our camper in the, the in the yard where I used to live. She goes, oh yeah, yeah. And I said, you don't think I could have a look inside the house tomorrow? And she goes, oh yeah, for sure, yeah. So anyways, by this point, it's starting to rain a little bit. The sky is a weird Never had flush toilet the whole time we lived there. Anyway, so we were looking at the house and uh, taking pictures and kind of dawns on me, you know what? I did some figuring and we are only in Saskatchewan. It was already day eight of our journey. And I give myself about 17 days to get to Newfoundland. Scotia to catch the ferry to Newfoundland. It was already day eight. I thought we got to get a move on. So we say goodbye, start driving. Get to Manitoba. Spent our first night in a truck stop. It had rained, so it was really muddy and slick, but that's okay. And then we spent another night in a um, campground. 
we would see more of Manitoba on the way back. But we were seeing a lot of wildlife. We are always seeing stuff like moose and stuff. Seeing uh, some black bear. And then uh, going into Ontario. Ontario was a really big province. It takes a long time to drive through Ontario. So we started heading down to um, Niagara Falls. We get down to Niagara Falls. In the evening, we find a campground. And there's all these VW buses around. Hundreds of them. Turns out there's a bit of a convention or something. So we start talking to this guy, and he's really nice. And he said, yeah, all the bus heads are down. I didn't know they called themselves bus heads, but I guess they do. But these, these little VW buses, they were all like really old ones, most of them. And some had been like fixed up really nice. Some were just stock and some were camperized and whatever. But I guess they get together and meet up, you know, every year somewhere. You know, so. Anyways, lovely people. The next day we hopped on a bus, went down to the actual falls. very misty, very wet, had a lot of fun. Walked through some tunnels and all that. We wanted to see more of the town, but then suddenly it started raining. So we came back, and man, did it rain. Wow. So we spent the night again in this campground as we showered up. Managed to dry our clothes up in the laundry. The next day, I had to go outside and unplug electricity for our, our camp because we had uh, we had plugged in that night and I was afraid of making an electric cue because the water's like up past my ankles actually halfway up my to my knees it was crazy fortunately that didn't happen oh I forgot to mention that on the way down to Niagara Falls we had to drive through Toronto and that was a nightmare my gosh the 401 wow busy that's another place I could use the GPS. Now you take the one the wrong ramp and you're screwed. And we did that three or four times. Finally, we got through Toronto. They have these huge sky bridges so the ships can pass underneath. Man, climbing up there. Wow. Scary. Anyways. So now I'm leaving. We had to drive through Toronto again. But this time, we were just, we stayed on the highway. We were heading for Montreal, so it was just a, a lot easier. We just kept going. We kind of managed to skirt around it. cities like that. So we're driving along now. We're, by this point, we're in Quebec. Like I said, Ontario's a big province. We, we saw a lot of Ontario. Beautiful. Stopped at an amethyst uh, quarry. Stuff like that. Uh, saw a lot of moose and everything. And, and we stopped along the way at a lot of different spots. And we stayed at truck stops and whatever. And then, uh, like I said, we'd see more of Ontario on the way back as well. So anyways, we, uh, we kept going. Quebec is interesting. Every little town has a big, beautiful Catholic church. Unbelievable. And it was kind of exciting for me because I'd never been past Ontario. That's the first I'd ever been was Ontario, so being in Quebec was really interesting. So, we stayed in uh, truck stops there as well. Beautiful province. We took a lot of back roads. Driving through Quebec was so interesting. It's nice to get off the uh, the highway, the beaten path, so to speak. So we um, just outside of Montreal. This one evening, we um, 
stop and have dinner in a restaurant. And this is like the second time we'd had a meal in a restaurant. So anyways, no, the third time, the second time was in uh, Niagara Falls at Red Lobster. So this was the third time. So we finish our meal. We go outside, we're looking at a map, because the map's brought out on the hood of the truck. the truck and we're looking at him and this couple comes out their names are Gary and Kathy but we don't know that at the time so this couple they're from Ontario and they're going to Newfoundland so we get talking and we're talking about different routes we're going to take or whatever so they were driving like a big motorhome type thing you know the kind that's about it's got as much square footage as a one bedroom condo, one of those. Very nice, so very nice. And they were lovely people. So, we say goodbye, good luck. Now we start driving, but this time it's getting dark. We have no place to stay. We come to a little town, we're driving around looking for a place to stay. Now you don't want to just pull over anywhere. some groceries. So we're on the road again, driving along, and we're on this two-lane road, and all of a sudden this vehicle comes up beside us, kind of slow, and they honk their horn, and they're waving, and we look over, and it's that big motor home. a fisherman, his dad was a fisherman, his uncle was a fisherman, the whole family was lobster, cod fisherman, that sort of thing. So he sells us a three and a half pound lobster for almost next to nothing. And he said that you got a pot to cook that in. I said, well, I don't think so. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. He said, well, I got a pot. This is where you, where are you staying? We told him the camp. He says, well, I'll be right over there. I'll bring my big pot over. So we get back to our campsite. Sure enough, about 10 minutes later, he shows up. He's got a big pot filled full of water. He'd throw it on the stove, get a boil, and throw the lobster in. You know, this thing was huge. Cook that up within minutes. Take it out, spray red. You know, he dumps some water out, washes out his pot, and off he goes. You know, very nice man, very nice. People were so friendly there. He didn't know from a hole in the ground, but yet he brings us a pot to cook a lobster in. So that lobster had more meat in a claw than most lobsters have in their tail in a restaurant. Just huge. So we lived on that for a few days. We continued on. We're making pretty good time at this point. We get to Nova Scotia. Right by this graveyard, we started looking at the graveyard. There was.
was crazy from the from the like the 1600s. Unbelievable. Really old graveyard. So that was interesting. So we went to Peggy's Cove. Very interesting place. Very beautiful. Big lighthouse there. Took lots of pictures. We were talking to um, some of the locals. Just like there's lobster traps piled up everywhere. All these colorful houses and sheds and shacks. So we found a nice campground. We stayed overnight. Showered up. So the next day, we're going to Cape Breton Island, Nova Scotia. And we're going to drive this trail called the John Cabot Trail. Now you picture a trail to be like a, a path you walk up. But no, this is like a, an actual highway. It's about 185 miles. Like you do a loop. Very scenic. Beautiful. So we do that. Takes us several hours, of course, and we stop off. Saw some whales, you know. We we, we pulled over because all these people pulled over the other their binoculars and cameras. So we pulled over to see what they were looking at. You can see all these big whales in the distance. Beautiful. So, anyways, we uh, continue on, and so we, we finished the trail. Very scenic. Let's get towards evening, so we got to find a camera. We were driving along, and there was a campground this way and a campground that way. We could have gone either way, but we went this way. Came to a campground, very nice, had everything we wanted. Uh, they gave us a nice campsite right in the trees, beautiful. So anyways, um, now the, uh, the kind of camper we were driving is called a Slumber Queen. That's the name of it, a Slumber Queen. Was a Ford 350. So, anyways, we're walking up to the. Uh, it's in the evening. We're walking up to the showers or the souvenir shop or something. I'm not sure. And this guy at the corner of my eyes, this guy walked up beside me. He's looking at me. So he looks at me, and I look at him, and it turns out it's Gary. I couldn't believe it. So he goes back and tells Kathy. He says, "Hey, guess who I saw?" And she says, "Who?" He goes, "Slumber Queen," referring to Linda and myself. So they invite us over to their campsite. And we're sitting inside their big motor home. It's got a couch and a 42 inch flat screen, shower, bathtub. It's beautiful. Not really the way I want to travel, but it, it suited them. It was good for them because they go down to, down to Arizona. I was doing my due diligence. I was 
was every more well, every second morning I would pop that hood. I would check the oil, check hoses, clamps, belts, check for leaks, check with the radiator level. You know, I always kept an eye on everything. So I couldn't figure out what the problem would be. So I grabbed the owner's manual. And one of the first things it said is said down. Um, sometimes a gas cap, if it's not put on properly or something, it'll cause that light to come on. I thought that's kind of weird. I mean, mind you, I just gassed up, so maybe. So I fiddled with it. So I wasn't sure what the problem was, so I decided to. We were going to stop and have some lunch, so I thought in the meantime, I'll disconnect the negative battery cable. So I did that. About an hour later, I connected it. Everything seemed to reset itself. The light never came on again. So I guess that was probably what the problem was, was the gas cap or something, but never gave us any problems. So. And I kept a close eye on everything. So we spent... in Prince Edward Island, driving around, go to beautiful beach, do the Anna Green Gables tour. It's a beautiful island. So, we head back to Nova Scotia. It's time to head for the ferry to Newfoundland. So we get to this campground just a few miles from the ferry. there in the early afternoon. We'll make sure we're there in plenty of time. We find a campground and we're parked there. And we go for a walk to kind of have a look. There's lots of people there. It's very, very busy, very big. And who do we see? Carrie and Kathy. Couldn't believe it. So it was getting to be almost like a joke at this point. We keep running into these people. some more. So anyway, so the next morning, we have to head to the ferry. I forget what time the ferry's leaving, but we all start heading down there early. And there's a big stream, like a big convoy of vehicles all heading down there at the same time. So we agreed to meet up with Gary and Kathy once we got to the lineup. So we got down there, got the ferry lineup, we met up with them, and we went to a Tim Hortons had a breakfast sandwich and yak for a bit. Caught on the ferry. That's about a nine hour ferry ride. There's one that's even longer but takes you to a different part of the province. This one takes you to Port of Basque. So we get on the ferry and we visit with them for a while off and on. We go have dinner in the restaurant and take some pictures. It was kind of foggy, you know, a lot to see outside. So anyways, we get to Newfoundland in, um, in the late afternoon. And um, so um, we say goodbye to Gary and Kathy and say we'll probably see you around, you know. So we drive off the ferry. We start driving up. And we see a uh, souvenir in tourist information place. So we pull in there just to ask a few questions about campgrounds and different things. And as I'm getting out of the vehicle, I see Carrie and Kathy's motor home. I see them driving up. I see them driving past. That's the last time I saw them. We never saw them after that. But we stayed in touch through email. We follow them on Facebook. You know, we, we like their posts. We stay in touch that way. So anyway, so we get to Newfoundland. We're scheduled to be in Newfoundland for a week. Exactly one week. So we go to uh, Gross Morin Park. We go to a little town called Trinity. Went there a couple of times. Went whale watching. I've never been on a whale watching tour before. We're not disappointed. See lots of big, beautiful whales. See them, uh, you know, they breach. Linda had a, a good night going with a nice land. She got lots of beautiful pictures. I had a little point and click type, type thing. I got a better camera since. But she got lots of pictures. So anyways, so that was...
was nice. So, we, uh, saw a lot of icebergs, you know, went to St. John's, went to, uh, St. John's, an interesting little, uh, town. You know, you've got Jelly Bean Row, all those colorful houses, you know. You always see those in postcards or on TV or in calendars or whatever, you know, and went to Signal Hill, and it was just beautiful. It was such a nice place to hang out, and we went to this one place. We saw a lot of puffins, and this is one place where they have these little root cellars and all that, and almost like little gnomes live there or something. It was cool, you know. Lots of beautiful little uh, towns and everything. So anyways, we drive all the way to Cape Spear. Now, Cape Spear is the most eastern part of Canada. Actually, it's the most eastern part of North America. There's no point that's as far east as Cape Spear. So we get there and we take some pictures in front of the sign because we've made it. We've gone clear across Canada as far as we can go. Then we drive down the coast of Bay Bulls and Betty Harbor. So we're down there for a night or two. And I'm thinking, man, I'm a long ways from home. I've never, excuse me, I've never been that far from home um, on a road trip. And I've never been on a road trip that was that long. Uh, this trip would take six weeks. Wednesday and return on a, on a Wednesday. It was pretty much 5,000 miles each way. $4,400 in gas. So anyway, we decide it's time to head back. We've gone as far as we can go. We went down the coast and we're driving back. So early in the morning we pack up and we leave. And we stop small town, there's a Walmart. I get the oil changed in the vehicle. We trade in our propane tank for another one. And we go into the, the Walmart to buy some groceries. So we're in there. And we see a big jar of cheese whiz. And Linda says, wow. Cheese whiz. I said, yeah, I've had cheese whiz in a dog's age. And we should buy it. Like I said, I used to give it to my kids all the time. And I used to eat it, but I hadn't had cheese whiz in probably 10 years or longer. So, we bought this big jar of cheese with. Now, when I'm at home, I like to eat kind of healthy bread. Like, I eat this bread called Country Chipmunk. It's got seeds and grains and pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds and whole wheat. You know, it, it seems healthy to me as far as bread's concerned. But if you're going to eat cheese whiz on toast, go for the white bread or better yet, the sourdough. So, we got a big load of loaf of sourdough. Now we are convinced that this jar of cheese whiz would last us the duration of the trip and probably be in the fridge at home for a month. Well, we couldn't have been more wrong. That sucker was gone in about three days. We ended up buying another one. It was so good. Every morning I would slather cheese whiz on my, on my toasted white sourdough. Just like mortar on a brick. Just slather it on. So good. So anyway, we're driving along, and this one night, our clothes got kind of damp because it rained and that sort of thing. So we decided to hang them up inside the camper. So we took a string and tied it to one of the cupboards, tied the other end to another cupboard, had a few clothes hanging there. We're driving along, we must be in this big crash bang. The weight of the clothes had pulled the cupboards open. And a bunch of stuff came out, but one of the things that came out was a, a big bottle of olive oil. Now it didn't break, but the lid popped off. So there's olive oil all over the linoleum floor. So we pulled over, cleaned it all up. Now if you ever want to clean your linoleum, use olive oil. So shiny after that. Beautiful. So anyway, we uh, run with that. Catch the ferry back to Nova Scotia after being on Newfoundland for a week. We start driving back. Anything we didn't see on the way, we tried to see on the way back. It was pretty much the same route until we got to Manitoba. Then we started taking more of a northern route. We stopped at Riding Mountain National Park in Manitoba. Wow. Beautiful little place. Right on the water. It's like a little resort town. Beautiful. Saw lots of black bear like right in the camp. 
side there. Not afraid of people at all. And that's not a good thing. Black bear everywhere. Went to the, the bathroom one night. There's three of them behind the bathroom eating berries. Just oblivious to everybody. So anyway. The park ranger always used uh, paintball guns to scare them off. So we, they had a place where you could look at some, uh, some bison. So we drove through there and there was this bison all over the place that they'd be standing in the middle of the road so you just kind of inch by them in your vehicle and then you could reach up and touch them. I got lots of pictures. If you go on my cooking channel you can see um, a, a video of uh, two bison squaring off. They're getting ready to have to fight. Now it's kind of grainy because by this time it was getting dark and I just had my little uh, uh, point and click type camera. It, it doesn't look dark in the video but that's why it's so grainy because it was getting dark. But you know the, the bison were everywhere, just fantastic. So at this point, we'd stayed in a lot of truck stops and WalMarts and campgrounds. So now we continue on. We're back in Saskatchewan. Stop in Saskatoon. Stay at the same Walmart. And Linda said, she started talking about Prince Albert National Park. She said, what's that like? And I said, well, we used to camp there all the time when I was a kid. I loved it. My friend Richard and I would hitchhike up there when we were 14, 15. The oldest guy in our band, Jim, he, had a, he got his driver's license, and so we would drive up there, a whole, whole bunch of us. I went camping there with my kids when I was little. I mean, with my parents when I was little. As a family. So I said, you know, I'm not ready to go home yet. So I pulled a Yui, went back, started heading north, drove up to a, a resort called Waskasu in Prince Albert National Park. It's just like riding a national park, almost a carbon copy. It's just beautiful. I went swimming in the lake. You know, that little resort down had hardly changed at all. The gas station was still there, the store was still there, the movie theater was still there. They had a lot more condos, but Everything was virtually the same. The, the campgrounds were still the same. It's just, just heartwarming to see that. We stayed there for two nights, then continued on back. We got into, oh, actually, my parents had a cabin there, a place called Memorial Lake. My dad built a cabin there in 67. And so we stopped off there and had lunch and saw the old cabin was still there. But it's weird because I remember my dad had all these gumball machines and all those little towns around there. He had gumball machines, so it reminded me like every time we stopped in a little town or drove through, I thought about my dad and his gumball machines. So, we get to Alberta, stay in a truck stop. Not even sure where it was, it's kind of close to the border. Saskatchewan, Alberta. Start driving home. Our last stop was in Lake Louise, Alberta. That was our first stop on our journey. It was now our last stop. We camped there that last night. In the mountains, woke up, it was freezing. And that was our last night on the road. We left on a Wednesday, got home on a Wednesday. Roughly a 10,000 mile odyssey. $4,400 in gas, like I said. But you know, we saved money by hardly ever eating in restaurants. We did a few times. Never stayed in a motel. The only time we paid for accommodation was in campgrounds. And that was about half the time. The other half the time was in Walmarts and uh, truck stops. and I'm so glad I was able to see, you know, a lot of my own. So, we got back, like I said, after six weeks. It was nice to be back, but I got thousands of pictures of it. And one of these days I'll have to do a, a slideshow or something, an ASMR slideshow. So in the meantime, my friends, thank you for, uh, for being here with me. This pizza was fabulous. 